Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. The chairman of the PLP responds to allegations of race baiting. Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist continuing to make his case for the commercial enterprises bill. The health minister reveals there could be possible fee hikes in the public health sector. Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Topping news tonight amid accusations of vicious race bidding by the Progressive Liberal Party to sink the government's commercial enterprises bill. PLP Chairman Fred Mitchell hit back at Attorney General Carl Bethel today, calling his comments spurious and beneath contempt. He urged the FNM to get over its preoccupation with race. Georgia Bain reports. Chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party, Fred Mitchell, is defending his party against allegations of using race baiting and scaremongering tactics in relation to the commercial enterprises bill. According to Mitchell, all they are doing is stating facts. Mitchell was responding to Attorney General Carl Bethel, who accused some elements of the opposition of stirring up xenophobic and irrational fears and reducing the debate on the controversial bill to an exercise in race baiting. The PLP chairman says Bethel is talking nonsense. At the time he made those comments, I stopped him dead in his tracks because what he's saying is actually nonsense. Uh, the FNM has to live by their own history and they have to accept the history of the country. And what we have is a philosophical difference of opinion on how work permits ought to be granted in this country. We're saying that this bill is taking us back to the pre-1967 period when all may come by giving work permits automatically. And the irony of the situation is that this is being driven by someone who is the son of the last premier of the UBP. That's all we did, is we pointed out the irony of that situation. According to Mitchell, race baiting is a tactic that the FNM is known to use. He accused the prime minister of using this tactic just last year. Hubert Minnis, when he was running for leader of the FNM, and he was under assault by the Bay Street group that makes up part of the FNM. Um, of which the former Premier's son and now Financial Services Minister was a part, or he was perceived to be a part. And Mr. Minnis himself said that he was not going to allow Bay Street to overtake or take over the leadership of the FNM. And he was defending ordinary people in the face of that. So if he can make that comment, why can't the PLP remind the FNM of their own history? The Minnesota administration has faced an uphill battle in its efforts to sell the commercial enterprises bill. Even former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram has come out against the bill, which some feel rolls out the red carpet for foreigners. According to Mitchell, the CEB is a desperate attempt by members of the FNM administration to save themselves in the face of dozens of terminations in the public sector because their popularity has plummeted so steeply in the face of the continued unemployment and economic issues. And so in the desperation, they've come up with this bill, which uh, they say is going to bring heaven on earth, but it won't. The former foreign affairs minister insisted that this latest attempt by the new government to tarnish the PLP will not work. They made a lot of promises which they can't fulfill. The economy is still going in the tank. Grand Bahama, which has five representatives of the FNM, they can't seem to get it up off the ground. Their supporters are in the streets screaming, fix Grand Bahama. So in their desperation, they're doing all of this. And that's what it is. And, um, you know, desperation, unfortunately, is not going to help them. What they need is to have civil society, groups such as ourselves, the Progressive Liberal Party, work with them to try and get this project off the ground. But you see, they're too busy trying to lock up our members and that's backfired badly on them as well. The Commercial Enterprises Bill was passed in the House of Assembly on November 22nd. All four PLP MPs voted against it. PLP leader Philip Davis said a PLP government would repeal the bill. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgia Bain. Well, in the face of mounting criticism, Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist sought to sell the Commercial Enterprises Bill to the Bahamas Institute of Chartered Accountants today, insisting new opportunities will bring the country's highly skilled workers back home. Jared Higgs reports. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquist made his case for the Minnesota administration's controversial Commercial Enterprises Bill. The bill, which seeks to liberalize the granting of work permits for approved investors, has been met with widespread criticism. However, Turnquest asserted today that the bill is the key to the creation of new opportunities 
and those who oppose it should consider the next generation. I think it is wrong for us to sit here in our ivory towers, having experienced whatever career success we have or whatever, and say this is it. That if you're going to be successful in the Bahamas, fit into this box, otherwise go somewhere else. In making his point, Turnquest pointed to the country's financial services figures, which he says have shrunk significantly over the years in relation to its percentage of gross domestic product. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram, one of the bill's critics, suggested that the financial services industry was performing strongly. Turnquest says the numbers don't back that up and the bill will incentivize investment in this sector. Financial services <coughs> used to be about 20 percent, 15, 20 percent of our GDP. It's down to 3 percent. We have to do something. We cannot continue doing what we've done before and expect growth. It's not going to happen. FICA President Gowen Bo says it's still too early to tell whether the government or its critics have the right idea when it comes to the long-term impact of the Commercial Enterprises Bill. He did, however, note that in many cases, responses to the bill have been reactionary. We're still having emotional conversations about it. We're having what I would call um, knee-jerk reactions to it, like to say repeal when you don't know. Because until you get into the seat, you know, those types of elements are probably um, too early to say. To say that this is going to expand the economy is probably too early to say unless you had pipeline business that you are actually referring to that you know is coming in. To say that it will reverse brain drain, too early to say. I think it needs to be more humility in the sense of saying these are the elements that we had intended. These are the mechanisms how we will measure it. And if it is not successful, this is what we will do to take it off the book so that it is not abused for intentions that we didn't see. The Deputy Prime Minister also added that the bill aims to increase the country's ease of doing business, which currently sits at 119 out of 190 ranked countries. The goal, according to Turnquest, is to leapfrog countries like Jamaica and climb from the bottom third to the top half of the list by next year. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. With officials anticipating a 50 to $60 million deficit in the public health care sector this year, Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands says the Minister administration is forced to make adjustments to the existing fee structure. And that means there will be some increases, increases for some services at hospitals and clinics across the country. Jasmine Brown reports. The health minister says the truth of the matter is the health sector cannot continue to operate with such a huge deficit. In the new year, the prime minister will announce to the public uh, some recommendations that uh, my ministry has made to change the fee schedules uh, completely. Uh, there will be uh, a reduction or elimination in some fees and an increase uh, in charges in other areas. Dr. Sands says the changes are not only necessary but long overdue, as he insisted the public health sector has operated with massive deficits for too long. He pointed to the public hospital authority's $9 million deficit during the first quarter of 2017. That figure is expected to quadruple by the end of the year. We anticipate about a $50 million uh, deficit in this fiscal year. Across public health, we anticipate another $10 million or so. Uh, clearly, the Bahamian people can't sustain that. Uh, we need to pay attention to the quality of care that we deliver. And if we are going to provide good quality equipment, adequate technology, uh, adequate uh, human resources, staffing and otherwise, we need to have the funds to do it. Sands was asked what specific areas were being targeted for an increase. His response? Stay tuned. However, he did say the process has been ongoing for more than a year and was initiated under the former Christie administration. He admitted that the recommendations made were reasonable and are now set to be vetted by cabinet. A strategic decision made. Sands said today that while the newly implemented fees at the morgue are a way of strengthening revenue within the health care system, officials have decided to hold off on the increase for the next 60 days. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. As she addressed the Bahamas Institute of Chartered Accountants today on the issue of corruption, BPL Chairman and former BICA President Darnell Osborne said she faced the issue firsthand when she took over the reins at BPL. Since being appointed as chair of the Bahamas Power and Light Company, there have been all sorts of aspects of corruptions, corruption witnessed. Do all require law enforcement? No. Bribery, fraud, embezzlement, 
nepotism, favoritism are some commonly used terms. However, all are not illegal, but unethical behavior is the beginning of corruption. Osborne was also asked about the importance of legislation to protect whistleblowers. It's amazing how many people know so much. And sometimes you have to weed out, you have to think about. I get calls sometimes, like from unknown numbers, and they tell you these things, and then you have to investigate, and you find out that it's true. Because sometimes it's like, this can't be true. I, like some things I have never ever seen in my whole or thought about in my whole career that, that has happened there. The audit into the Bahamas Agriculture and Marine Science Institute is expected to be completed in a matter of weeks. That's according to Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Renwood Welts, who gave an update on the matter outside cabinet this morning. Man Judd was called in to uh, audit the accounts of BAMSI, just to be able to give the Bahamian people an understanding as to what took place in BAMSI over the past three, four years. Um, an awful lot of money was expended in trying to bring food security, establishing BAMSI. And, um, you know, not that we're saying that anything took place that was untoward, but we're just giving the Bahamian people an opportunity to see what took place. Well, it says once the audit is complete, it will be viewed by cabinet and based on what it, what it reveals, the Minister administration will then decide on how to proceed with the program. The audit was launched soon after the Minister administration won the May 2017 general election. In July, Wells revealed the Christie administration spent at least $80 million on BAMSI. Since its inception, BAMSI has been surrounded by controversy due to several project delays and a protracted construction period. As for the future of BAMSI, Wells noted that the government will do what it thinks is best. As was spelt out by the Free National Movement, we're going to dissect BAMSI. Uh, you're going to have the university part of BAMSI. Uh, it was our intention to call it NAFRI, the National Agricultural uh, Fisheries Research Institute. Um, there's still debate and discussion as to whether or not we should change the name to that um, for it just to be agriculture and fisheries or whether or not we want to still hold on to the whole idea of agriculture and marine. Still to come on our news, the data commissioner condemns the leaks of private information, plus what's happening at the post office. The details are after this break.